peace, safety, security, prosperity, freedom. That's freedom. So that's really what it all comes down to is being free, not being beholden. God doesn't make us beholden. His yoke is easy. His load is light. Live by the golden rule. Treat others the way you want them to treat you. This is godly logic. This is what I mean about instinct and intuition and fail-safes. It's built into us. Don't run away from those things. Run to those things. Seek to be more like God and less like those that are of the world. Not just stuck in the world like everybody else, but those that are of the world that revel and relish worldliness. Get away from that thought system, that philosophy. Run. Don't walk away from it. Get, get the hell away from it. As a friend of another, we all have the responsibility of offering up constructive criticism as we see honestly best and fit or necessary for our friend's well-being. Yes, that's why you offer constructive criticism, for that only reason, not because I'm right and you're wrong. No, it's helping somebody to see the forest for the trees. Because when you're backed away from it, it's more easy to see it and to give proper constructive criticism. But there's, we, we, we turn away from it often to offer that to people because we think we're being critical of somebody that we love and respect, but the opposite is true. You see, that's how Satan entangles even the upright and decent, the saints out there often. get you know They get swept up in that kind of that mindset of saying, well, no, you just said something mean to me. That's what you did. You're in, you insulted me. But really, all you were doing as a good and upright, decent person, being true to yourself, being true to God, is to offer up constructive criticism because you felt they weren't seeing the forest for the trees. So you've got to get step back away sometimes to see clearly. It's about a focal point that often we can have where others don't have it. So it's our obligation as a friend to point it out and be as tact, be divinely tactful, be extremely diplomatic in how we get across. If we really want to reach somebody and we really want them to grow from what we have to say and to be more godly people, then we've got to reach them in a way that's palatable, that's acceptable to that person. And be honest with yourself and you will be effective. If you're really tapped into the Holy Spirit of God, you say, God, give me the words, give me the thoughts, give me the behavior so that I can be a good example. I can teach best by example. So let me be that example. Jesus states that we should try and make our enemies, real or perceived, our friends. And I would quote him saying, you've heard that you should love your friends and hate your enemies. That's coming, that's quoted. See, that's something Satan would quote out of the Bible. You know, love those that love you and hate those that hate you. This is where the eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth comes from. But Jesus refuted that. He said anybody that hates another human being is a murderer in the sight of God. Okay, That's how easy it is to be a first degree murderer to God. Now, do you want to err on the side of caution? You believe in first degree murder? First degree uh, murder and uh, capital punishment? Well, just remember then, maybe that's what you're going to get. Because you hated another human being. And you did it with full... You know, soundness of mind, like they say, first degree capital punishment. You've got to be, you know, it's conniving, it's planning and all this. And you did it with your, in your right mind, right? You knew what you were doing. So if you know what you're doing when you hate a human being, then, uh, you know, and you believe that these people that commit first degree murder ca uh, are worthy of capital punishment. You understand? Err on the safe, then sorry side. Err on the side of caution. Love your enemy, but like I said, doesn't mean you might be, might not be called on to kill your enemy. It's just this is the paradoxical uh, calling we have as servants of God. 
that we've got to be sharp and shrewd, not to boast about it, but just so that we can be effective, friends of God, and help win treasures. And you are the treasure. I am the treasure. He's after human beings. He's after souls, the souls of men. He wants them to be his friends. He wants them to love God, love him of, his own, of all of our own free will and accord. We love God for being such a good God and being so glad, so happy that he's a good God, a loving God, a merciful God. We've got to share that with other people. Isn't, it, isn't terrorism, quote, a, quote, hate crime and vice versa? I touched on that earlier. I mean, it's semantics. It's like, of course it is. How do you, how do you go up and, and, and kill some random person if you're not filled with hate? And how is that not terroristic? It's, terror, it's terrorizing. It's, it's terrible. It's ridiculous. We want to, oh, let's split hairs about this. We don't know if it was a terrorist attack. I mean, we've got a, we've got a, uh, a flood of it. There's an epidemic of terrorism in the world. And if we had Gerald Flurry talk about it, he'd say, well, what do you expect when you got drones bombing wedding parties over in Afghanistan? You think you're not going to create a few radicals out there that are going to hate you to the point of wanting to murder random Westerners? Of course you are. That's not excusing it. That's just pointing out the unreality of our day. That's all been crammed down our throats. Since the so-called government is in collusion with the banksters, broke our economy, they're stuck with the blame. You know, it's this philosophy. You go into a store and you start handling the merchandise. You break it, you bought it, right? Let the culpable party be responsible. If you go to court about any of this stuff, if you break somebody else's property because you assumed control of it, then you uh, are responsible. That's it. It's, it doesn't matter that it was an accident. It doesn't matter that you were incompetent. But it's not like that with these uh, these bailouts, is it? No. We broke it deliberately. That's what they say. And we're going to make you buy it. That's privatizing the profits and socializing the debt. Yeah, I know the score... And it utterly disgusts me. If you look up that term, knowing the score, yeah, I know it. And you can know it too, and it'll, you'll find it disgusting. If doing well in a wholly wicked world system is called success, then please give me failure. America in the 21st century is a wannabe Christian nation under Satan's control. So yeah, that's a lofty notion that we're a Christian nation, but let me let me tell you the score, okay? Uh-uh. No, it's under the control of Satan right now. Remember, anyone who makes money is paying taxes and is thereby is thereby complying to a beast system. So all you people that think the answer to all these lefty communists, just go out and get a job and support the system. Remember, you're you're supporting the beast. And the more money you make, the more you're supporting the beast. This current establishment. So just put that in your pipe and smoke it, okay? So don't tell me that's the answer. If you're disgusted and you walk away from the system and go live out in the woods, I don't blame you, man. It makes me want to vomit. While there's still time, let's do more pleading with dignity, with dignity, plead with dignity, and less condemning with wrath. The Holy Spirit may also rightly be referred to as the Spirit of Truth, the great counselor, the great comforter, the great encourager, the great sustainer, and any other positive quality anyone can imagine. I'm going to end it there, folks, just about in time, and I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend, and I love everybody, and, and I do wish everybody the best. God bless you all. And God's will, I'm not going to ask, may it be done. I know that it will be done. But not in my time, not in your time, not in our time. It'll be done in his time and in his way. It's going to be carried out. So all you bad guys, you black hats, put that in your pipe and smoke it. You're going down. You will not prevail against the almighty creator. He owns you too. Stop fighting. Stop fighting against God's will being 
instilled, installed upon this earth. Because good things are coming, and there's very good reason to be optimistic about that. But we got to stop this train, and we got to get it on another track. God bless the President of the United States, and I wish him well and his family. And God be with us all, help us all to overcome the wickedness and the enticements of this wicked world. Until next time.